Okay. I'll be right with them. Tell everybody we're getting ready. Uh, let me get mine. No, no, no. Stay. 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 Jim. Mm -hmm. Watch the princess is coming out. Okay, hey, you can put her on the lead. And you'll take us. Yep. Come on. Hey folks, Wolf Driver coming at you live. Sorry, we had to get in a little, had to get it all started now. So, I'm thinking you can hear me, and I'm hoping you can hear me, and I'm going to have to do some checking. But right now, you're looking at a multi-level broadcast we're doing at the Amazing Chase course. Pretty cool stuff. And I'll get you introduced, and I'll set up here if you give me a couple minutes. And I know the camera's a little wonky right now, but it's going to happen. We're going to have some fun here today. Got all the dogs with us, including the GG Meister, and we're all having a great time. So that's the important thing. Because this is new, it's just a new way of broadcasting. As I said, I'm going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff, and I want to make sure that we're working right before I get too far along. So bear with me, if you will. And I'm just going to check. And we are live. Cool. Testing it out. Well, cool. Great. Just gonna check. Okay, so everything checks out. Jim's gonna turn the machine on in a couple minutes. You got a bead on all the dogs? Yep, cool. Okay, Jimmy, you can let her rip. So, folks, what we have now. Chase! Good boy. Princess, here. Good girl. So we're all just getting here and getting settled in. So sometimes they can get really excited and be a little contentious towards each other. So I've got my meter on. We're going to see how far we go today. Um, I got different views for you today. And I'm going to be able to change cameras rather easily. There's the princess. Princess is about 13 and a half years old. This is Aro. So let me explain. We're at a place I call the Amazing Chase Course. What it is essentially is it's lure coursing. There goes Zaro. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So it's lure coursing, which is a canine sport actually. I have to keep track of everybody. There's the Jagster. Chase! That was designed for sight hounds because they're essentially hunting with their vision. This is a flag that runs around the course. There it is, actually. And 
because of the way it's lightweight and it moves in the wind, it simulates what would be prey. And they get very excited by it, especially the two dogs, Zorro and Princess. Chase and Jag are just here for the for the beer. <laughs> They're just here. Come on, Jag. Jag. Good boy. They're just here to do whatever they want. This is this is free time. This is fun time. But essentially, we're here to chase this flag. Chase. <whistles> chase. So I'm gonna. This course has had a tree down. Now this is a fenced-in area. And it's only fenced in by very little, uh, let me put Chase on now. So I'm going to show you how I use the collar. And Chase is down here, essentially, right there. So I'm trying to do everything here. That's why I'm, I apologize if uh, the camera's moving around. He's just doing a bathroom stop. This is the Jagster. Here comes Zorro chasing the flag. He's actually doing what we do up here. <laughs> The other dogs, again, it's a dog's life. It's all part of the fun. There goes Princess. She's, look at her go. Oh, and there goes Zorro. And Jag and Chase. <laughs> so Chase is gonna chase Zorro, living up to his name. And again, it's what we do up here. We have fun, we chase the flag. They can chase each other and do all the fun stuff they'd like. So I'm just a little slow with my speech here because I'm trying to get the equipment to work. The Try to give you the best view possible. Okay, here we go into the cooling tops. I thought they were gonna get into it. Princess is just checking it out. Now. That's Jim, he's running all the equipment. Jag's getting ready to take Chase on. And Zorro is looking for the flag. She can see it. <laughs> These guys are like a uh, frickin' frack. There goes Zorro into the water, and there he comes out. And by the way, Gigi's up here too. So we do other activities. We'll free range a little here just to get their mind off of the flag. Especially, that's Chase. Especially Princess and Zorro, who, are, who really get into it. I mean, they're... It's an instinctive drive they have, of course. And they get excited by it the most. Here comes Zorro, there goes the flag. It's clocked him at almost 30 miles per hour. So I hope you're enjoying the view here, and I hope you're enjoying the broadcast. It's a new way of doing things. I'm able to hold the camera. I can additionally give you some other views, like uh, Chase right now. He's going into... There goes Zorro. How cool is that? And then we're back over. This is like the water cooler in an office setting. <laughs> they all gather around there, see what's up with it, and jump in, cool their pads. Their pads, they, they actually, they consider it that a dog would sweat from its pads. That's the best way to describe it, but they do emit heat from there. So if you can cool their pads, that is a great way to help them cool. Now it's breezy out here. It just rains, so it's a great time. It's still rather cool on what would be a normally uh, humid summer day. Flag. There goes Princess. And there they go into the. Give you another view of that. Now I'm doing a lot here, so I can't really interact with you. But Jag can. He's not doing anything. Look, look. <laughs> when you see him do that, he probably has a little. Um, A uh, little uh, hitchhiker or something on his tail. That's why I jumped up like that. Princess, come on. Good girl. Come on. Princess, no. No. She's, oh, she's eating grass. Making sure she's not eating something she shouldn't be. No, it looks just like, yeah, it's grass. Okay, good girl. That's okay. 
my first instinct is when I see them eating in the field, I'll tell them no, just to make sure they stop to see what it is, especially because we do so much running through areas. Now the areas we run, there's usually nothing toxic to them. These are all private lands, but there could be some animals that have left behind some waste, which won't hurt them, but uh, if I can avoid it, I do. Here comes the Z-Man. So, we are live still, and hopefully you're enjoying it. We got a bathroom break there, I won't show you that. Jack, Jack, come on, good boy. Jack. Sometimes, if you don't, it takes a time or two. Come on, good boy. Just go up to him and give him a little touch on the shoulder, let him know. Um, they won't hurt Gigi, but they could get really excited around her and a little ruckus, if you will. So um, you might have saw the broadcast yesterday. I mean, we, they all play in the playground together. But she's restrained, so that automatically makes a dog a little more apprehensive. And she actually beca could become a little aggressive, and that could set off a spark. So I'm always taking my being, – being as cautious as possible and – Understanding that the activities we do are a little unusual and it really appeals to their instincts So it puts them in a call of a wild situation and by that I mean their Wild behaviors can show a little more so I want to make sure that we keep them as Grounded as possible with letting them have a good time now Jason Chase and Zara that's just a show of dominance. It's not really a um, Pumping, if you will. Here we come. Now we're going past Gigi. Look, now she wanted to grab it. And we used to run our other Chinese crested on this before. Just trying to, if you, cool. and you see, it's all about, all about the dog having fun. And what will happen is, I'll take a ride here. There's a course for me that I can run the perimeter of the cornfields you see there. And we can do roughly uh, about five eighths of a mile. So I try to do a few laps again to get their attention off of this, to give them a break from what they're doing, as well as to get the other dogs some exercise that aren't as engaged. That's Princess yelling at the flag. Just uh, her getting excited by it is great. Um, she's elderly, so anything she can do is great. And that's why she's uh, sometimes she'll jump in there as she, her joints, she gets more mobility, she gets more active here. She'll jump into the tub. But in the beginning, she's tight from the car ride and her uh, joint ailments, arthritis, so she's not as likely to jump in there as we start. But we can put a little ramp there for it, but it's usually not necessary. And what I'm going to do is water because she doesn't have access to these tubs. And I might be able to check some comments here when things calm down and I get a really good uh, bead on everything. You can see the cornfield there. So beyond that fence, there's roughly uh, 20 acres that will run and get a nice, I'm filling this up with the water. So I'm giving you another view. Sorry, it does say auto power off. We're not going anywhere. At least not yet. So I just got her a water bowl. We always ride with water bowls and water. You never know where we're gonna wind up. She got my GPS. Controller. G. There you go, good girl. Gigi says, oh, thank you. She did look at it, though. So apparently there was something in that grasp. Princess. Good girl. You see how Chase moved away from her when she went over there? Because he thought she was going to sniff where he was and therefore there goes princess into the tub now 
see how she's her mobility's getting better so she feels more comfortable in getting in there still got some thunder going on Jag is in his normal spot let me show you this he's laying under the tree that is the Jagster So this is a, what was a horse pasture, and the folks that live here rented it for that purpose. And I came along and said, hey, I'd like to run my dogs inside of this pasture. This is roughly uh, three acres inside of here. And I set up this amazing chase course. I knew nothing about it, lure coursing, as I told you. Set this up. Uh, there's been a bunch of different configurations and a bunch of different equipment. I actually had to custom build my own equipment. So what we have here is the flag. Sometimes it'll get stuck, and Zaro is so into it that he'll grab it and tear it or pull it off one of the pulleys. So Jim's just fixing it. We do have a scooter here that I run the dogs on. Uh, well, don't run them on, but I free range them with so I can be as quick as they are. And uh, sometimes we'll run around the course with that to um, get any. Oh, Gigi, good girl. <laughs> so she got off her little contraption. Gigi, good girl. See, that's the way it should be, just call her. Now, they think I'm leaving, so Jag's coming over. Come on. They think we're going out to either free range or leave, and even though the truck's here. Hey, can you tie this again, Jim? <laughs> if you just hook that end... Sometimes they kick off, but it's a good way for her to get used to being off leash is to keep a dog, to keep her with her leash hanging. And this is just a tie out for a big dog reason. Was on there before. What Come on, pretty. Come on. Good girl. And these two freaking frack are still messing around. And Jag's over here. Now, once Jim lights that back up and hits the button, I'll take you over to the equipment. So our equipment, essentially, looks like this. And there's the scooter, by the way. We've used battery-operated machines. You might have seen uh, an episode or a few episodes on the Dog Whisperer, Caesar Milan. I think it's stuck somewhere, Jim. Yeah, he's eating. He's eating. <laughs> That's all right. You want to take the scooter out there? I got batteries on the truck. I don't know how to stop you from eating. <laughs> Well, you just got to get it running, of course. So, the um, they actually used this to help some dogs channel their energy, as I've been describing. They've used the lower coursing. But the equipment that originally uh, we bought was some of the best equipment on the market, but it couldn't live up to as many rounds as we need to do with the Huskies. For instance, another dog Check out what everybody's saying and make sure we're still live here. This is quite a quite a scenario doing all this stuff and I love doing it. I mean I love watching the dogs enjoy themselves and sharing with you the pleasure they have. We're down for a little while. Okay, totally? No, just the string. Oh, okay. So, 
what has to happen here is I'm gonna read some comments and I'll tell you what's going on. So, hi Kimmy, how are you? Yep, you can check on um, lure coursing. Look it up on the internet and you'll see it again. It was it was a like a AKC sport. It's very uh, how can I say this? Very um, polished, if you will. So we're we're uh, kind of messing that up, making it a little um, more um, rough around the edges. Actually, they're making it available. They tried to reserve it for, they, they, they try to keep it for the sight hounds, which, which do excel the best at it. But as people are learning more about this, they actually, from what I understand down south, set up some courses where you could go to an area kind of like a driving range and bring your dog and run them a couple laps for 10 bucks and he's usually content and usually had a good time and it's usually uh, one and done. So they're doing that. Hey Mimi, great to see you. We are in West, oh, you're in Washington State. Sounds cool. The sound goes away when I switch cameras. Oh, thank you for letting me know because um, that's one of my settings that I wanna, wanna uh, fix. Nice to see them in place again. I just saw one of the dogs get to the top. Yes, thanks Dixie, great to see you too. Yeah, thank you for telling me, um, Kimmy, about how that happens when we switch cameras. Um, I thought the audio feed was supposed to camera, ca carry over, but apparently it doesn't. I'll, something I'll have to work on. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm probably gonna take a ride. Let's see if we can get Princess into the tub. No, she's drinking from the tub. 10 minutes? Okay. Um, yeah, can you hold this for a sec? Just kind of film me. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll put Gigi over there when we leave, just to give her a little shade. Okay. I think she'd appreciate that. Do uh, you want to do that? Actually, let's do that now. Why don't you do that, Jim, if you don't mind? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. If you can get an area to tire to, just because it's getting a little hot in the field. Not really hot, but the sun, she's more sensitive to it. So we're going to move Gigi. And Gigi's with me. Um, she loves keeping me company. She's such a great dog. All dogs are great. I love them all. Um, but my wife is away now, so I didn't want to leave her at home alone, even though there's plenty for her to do there. She's, um, Chinese Crestids are pretty, um, yeah, she's following you, Jim, are pretty, um, she's right on your heels. Out there. They're dependent. They're, uh, they get a little, they need us. Come on, princess, good girl. I'm just watching Jim do this. I'm trying to give you a view of everything. Cool, you got her tied. Good. Okay, um, and I'm going to get you to film this. You well, full length of the string. Okay, and you'll watch her when I Yeah. Get. You want me to put it on? What's that? No, I can do it, bud. Okay. I'm not going to be able to bring the camera with me. That's the thing that I just realized. Sometimes I have problems with this. I don't want to break it. I'll get, let you do it. Thanks, bud. So we're just trying to get the scooter going here. Now I'm going to give them a ride, folks, around the fields. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take you through this. Haji, <laughs> she got. <laughs> Not in there? No, no, no. It might be a bad battery. Let me give you another one. It's not working now? Okay. What? Keep it on, Gigi. I'll bring it. So, you're watching us as this happens. It's kind of cool about live broadcasting. Except for, <laughs> Jag's like, is it time to go home, Dad? Jag's a little bit on the lazy side. He does all these activities without complaining. He likes doing them. 
but he's a couch potato. So, I'm just changing the batteries here because it didn't start up, which is usually a sign the battery's bad. But anything can be happening. Can you hold that? Oh, you can put it on, Jim. Gigi wants to know what's going on. Princess. You hear it arc, it probably. Yeah. Battery was dead. Um, can you do me a favor? Uh, I, don't fix it while I'm going. I'm just going to do a run around. Okay. But point the camera. Not Are you. You, you, got, you got, got it opposite. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, just point it as we go around. All right. And uh, keep Gigi company, please. And I'm going to leave this here. So we keep a steady uh, broadcast going. Okay. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Nope. Back, back, back. Back, wait. Okay, folks, so I'm going to take. Um, no, we can do, yeah. Uh, are you going to be able to hold her in the one hand? And walk after you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. But she's going to want to follow me, so. She's having fun. Good girl. Here you go, Jim. You can stay right here with her and just hold that. It's the best she can do, buddy. And just stay here until I get back. Cool? Okay. Come on, princess. Come on, G.
Can you get through there? Good, man. Come on. Thanks, bud. Mm-hmm. I'm still 10 minutes back. What's that? I'm 10 minutes from fixing the thing. Okay, that's fine. I can stay here with her. Okay, what well, do you want her to lose? You want yeah, I can put her right here for thing. So, folks, I, I hope you're... Stuff. Oh, you know what I gotta get? One, one more thing. Hold her for one second. This filming. me. I gotta put my camera on. I forgot. Stay. I had to move that. What's that? This? No, the other thing. All is good. Be right back with you in one sec. I'm back folks, sorry about that. Took a little run with the dogs, with the wolf pack, into the fields, now into the fields there, Jim was trying to give you the best he could. Best view, he's not um, a camera guy, but he's learning, how about those two? Just drinking away, it's so cool. So, we took a ride, it's a, only about five eighths of a mile. It's a cornfield and a soybean field. This is a, like a farmette, if you will, and they have a pathway about six feet or eight feet wide around the whole field they made for me, so it's really cool. Gives the dogs a chance to, again, get their mind off of this, the ones that are really into it, as well as the other dogs who aren't as into it. Gives them a chance to, I'm going to film this because this is cool.
excuse me for one sec. And I got a phone call amongst all this. <laughs> uh, that phone call can wait. That's a telephone uh, solicitor, it looks like. So Jag's in the... I'm going to show you if I can how he gulps his water. Oh, he's not doing it there. Bonnie Princess is chilling. And Chase is chilling. And Zara was looking for the flag. That's He's obsessed with the thing. And Gigi's right here. She's happy. She's on, Then I'm on the other end of the leash. So I'm going to check the feed. See if we got anything else going on, folks. Good. We still got people on. Good to see everybody. If I got any comments. Looks like we got 17 of them. Okay. Mimi, great to see you. <laughs> Your three little ones are the same when they leave. Yeah, they want to go. They do. <laughs> yeah, she was upset. I know she gets upset, but she learns the deal. She's um still just just over the puppy years. Chase. Chase. No, Chase, good boy. He's just he's okay. He's just checking her out, but I want to look, she wants to play. He plays with her the most out of any of them Chase does. He um He's really a little boy inside there. He's about eight years old. And yeah, that's Princess right there. And Oh, no, sorry. That's Jag. Princess and Jag are the most, uh, look alike the most, especially just when you see their bodies. They've got the same color eyes and very similar builds. Jag is Chase. She's a lady, Chase. You can't be doing that stuff. Chase, good boy. So... When you see them out in the field, and they both have a pretty full, they're all woolly coats, but they both have a pretty full coat of hair. And sometimes until I see their face, it's hard for me to tell who's who. That's why I teach them to, hey guys, <laughs> even when I call the girl, princess or, or uh, Gigi, I'm like, hey guys. See, Zara's waiting here patiently for the flag. So Jim's got to restring some of this course because we've had the rain, as I mentioned, and the line gets worn out here. So... The dogs tugging on it and the going through the machine as it goes around the course is all stress on the line. And you don't want to use too strong of string because then it could be a hindrance for the dogs. They do grab it sometimes. Theoretically, in lower course, and they're not supposed to, but this is husky style lower course. And as I said, that's why I call it the amazing chase. So if they grab it, um, you want to, we want to make it so it will tear with enough force. So it's not like they can tug it too much and start um, do some damage to themselves. So we're careful about that. Everything I do, what are you going to do now, Chase? Everything I do is all about the safety of the dogs, of course. And I won't block Chase out. No, Chase. Good boy. Good boy. Chase. You know, on right today, isn't he? There he goes. Chase has got to be entertained. 24 hours a day, so now he's going to say, oh, if I can't mess with Gigi, I'm going to mess with Zaro. And Zaro and Chase are roughly the same height. Zaro looks a lot fuller than Chase. They're actually both pretty thin under that fur. If uh, Chase gets wet, I mean, you can really see he's a, what they would call a racing weight. I mean, he is so efficient. Stay good, girl. Good girl. And he'll actually, uh, when there's not a... Um, when we're not real active, he actually sometimes will go without eating. Now, dogs in the wild will fast themselves. Usually, I used to do it to my dogs one day a week. And that uh, gives their system a rest. And they say it's healthy for them, but I don't do that anymore. I've never had a bad experience with it. But they all love eating too much, so I don't do it. Let me switch the cameras here. When they if they get back in that corner together, it's a confined area, and those two are a little testy towards each other sometimes, especially out in the not a strange environment, but not as familiar because we're not here all the time. It's not like at home where they're more used to each other. Cool. And as I said, this place is roughly three acres. Um, lure courses 
in the in the um, that they set up for sighthounds traditionally are anywhere from three to five acres. So this is on the smaller side, and when they loop it, it's about mm, three eighths of a mile maybe. If they run the perimeter, which they don't, they shortcut and everything. But you got to remember, I said Zaro, he can clock up uh, 12 miles, 12, 15. I think he clocked 18 miles one time here, and I did uh, put a radar gun out there and put him, uh, got him at 30 miles per hour speed. Princess, um, she'll on a good day, she'll get 10 miles. <laughs> Sorry, I'm showing you Chase and Zaro. That's that's Zara, that's Chase trying to be his big brother and say. He's dominant. It's um, a game. That's what dogs do, and uh, they're both males. But it's a dominant thing, and it can sometimes cause aggressive behavior. It doesn't happen with them, so I let them do it. You're going to check it? Cool. Hey, can you shut that gate? That fence in there? Cool, thanks, man. Princess. We don't want them getting back to where the equipment is, so we keep, we keep a gate there. And they would go back there because they know the we call it the bird. The flag goes into there, and they're very interested in that. So Jim's going to take the scooter that I was just on. In case you weren't tuned in, then you'll get a chance to see how it works. It uh, it's the same. I call it the rough board on the version I have at home that will attach that I attach the dogs to. But this one we use up here for free ranging and course maintenance, etc. So it's really wet from the grass, from the uh, rain we had. So that's why the wheel was spinning there. But he'll take a ride out and just check the line all the way around. Because sometimes, you see these are the spindles. And sometimes under the spin, this rope, the string, can go under the spindle and that'll, that'll stop the machine from working. Just like that, especially the dogs will tug on them a little bit. Here comes the chase man. He saw me getting down low and he's like, what's up, you were getting in my territory. Here he comes again. She's like, Chase, Chase, good boy. Chase is just bored. He wants to do something. He's like, get this machine working. Even though he doesn't chase the flag, he chases Zara who chases the flag. And then sometimes Jag will say, I'm going to wake up and I'll chase it. Chase. <laughs> There's a bit of maintenance involved here. A little more today because it was wet, it rained. So when you get a wet line, as I said, it's more likely to get snagged up. It's a little heavier to the actual equipment that pulls it. So I like that. I love broadcasting with all different views where sometimes you see us when they're connected to the bike. Sometimes you see us out in the in the great wild yonder, free ranging all through the woods and the different farms we roam. Sometimes you see us in the neighborhood on the rough board, and of course sometimes you'll see us here. Chase, Chase, Princess, here. Good girl. I just don't want her to be while well, they rough house because she feels like. She's the alpha. She's the pack mama. So she'll prevent them if they start roughhouse and she'll try to get in there and sort it all out. And that can be a little bit uh, problematic. Not everyone can be as calm as Gigi, who's right here. I'm just having a leash. Now, we can, when I don't have the cameras on, and because I got to pay attention to the camera, we're not doing a live broadcast, I can let her off leash here but I can't give her my undivided attention. So better off to keep her on the leash or keep her on the tie up. And here comes Jim, he went around to the course. So if you have any more questions or comments, I appreciate all the feedback, just like um, someone had said about the audio not working when I switch cameras, different things I really appreciate it because I'm watching the broadcast on this harness I wear that's around my neck. Uh, you might have seen me when I switch cameras. And you can't always, I can't always look at it, or if I'm in the sunlight, it becomes a problem to see it clearly. So we're gonna move back. We are back up and running, folks. Amazing Chase is live right now. You're with the Wolf Driver, the Wolf Pack, GG and Jim. So there's the flag. 
doing a circle. The dogs don't have a bearing on it where it is yet. They're just watching. And again, it is a little warm out here, so they're not as actively chasing it. It's right there. I don't know if you see it, but I'm going to try to... Jim's playing a little cat and mouse. He's trying to change it from side to side to get the dogs interested in it. And I'll give you a mileage reading in a little while. There goes the flag. And it's working its way around. He reversed the direction. That's why it didn't come around the way we originally thought it was going to. Okay, so Zara sees it. I was looking at it. And Jim's drawing him in with that. Remember, like a sight hound that this sport was normally designed for, it doesn't hunt with scent they hunt by their vision so they would see this thing all the way around the course there goes our he didn't get it he tried oh he's, he's, he's just gonna wait in the cubby they're all getting a little tired here so i know they're tired because they're waiting by the uh where the machine is to let it come back around they love chasing it but as they get tired some They'll sit by and wait for it to keep coming through. So, and that's why Jim will do his little uh, cat and mouse game. And that is Maryland corn behind them in the fields. Silver Queen. It's referred to sometimes. That's a strain of it. If uh, Betsy is out there watching, I know Betsy always um, chimes in and helps me out with some of my farm farming understanding. I'm not a, I wasn't raised on a farm and don't understand it all. There is Zara. But he tried. There's Princess and she's yelling at the flag. Let's see if we can get him. Nope, still can't get him to run. Wow, Zara's not running either. <laughs> so I'll measure their distance and how far they went and of course just look at them and see if they want to go. Now he's going to go this way. Here he goes. Now he's engaging. So I can zoom in on this. Oh, he's waiting for it to come still. And as the flag comes to him, he'll take off. It just turned the corner, and Jim's going to try to draw him down there. See, when the flag comes up through the motor, they have more of a chance of grabbing it. Because it's slower, it makes a lot more turns. And when they grab it, here comes our... He just takes it off the court, off the track. <laughs> He's still. He don't want to be on I think I wore him out on that lap. <laughs> and the reason being, if you see the rope is in the air, we've designed, we've gone through many of... Uh, changes on this course, many of the uh, um, time ways we've tried it because the dogs are pretty smart. <laughs> Sometimes it's tough to get it around them without them grabbing it. The princess giant, that's so cool. There we go. Princess is walking over to the water. guys are in slow motion today but that's okay like I said it's all about them whatever they want to do that's why we're here now we did a good run actually we did it at 360 I think on Monday so uh, and we're planning a ghost well actually a ghost run next week we're planning a, um, a midnight mushing run tomorrow hung up on something yeah again got a little problem here it's hung up again here comes Zaro Oh, he's going to come over and give us some entertainment. Oh. There's Chase. Okay, so Zara's going to hunt the flag down. See, there's a lot of dynamics going on, especially when you get the three of them, believe it or not, Princess, Chase, and Zaro in the area. And sometimes Zaro's the, the little brother out of all of them. He's the youngest, even though it's not by much with the other two males. But because he was brought in 
last to the wolf pack. He, and he's the biggest though, but he still feels like the little brother, like the stepchild in some ways. He's not, but so he is very um, passive and um, almost submissive in some ways. So, and you can, there's different ways to check your dog's personality, how they are. Some, of course, are aggressive or more active. Some are passive, like I said, submissive. Um, so I'll let the dogs do pretty much what they want to him, and he'll just take a back seat to almost anything, which is good and bad in some ways. Gigi's trying to, she wants to go down there and see what's going on. Got a train not in the not-too-distant area. Jim just trekking the track. They see Zara following Jim a little bit because they're trained to follow me or follow us on the equipment we use, so they naturally take to it. And that's why I always tell anybody who's riding any equipment around them to please uh, be careful because the dogs are wanting to chase you. Here come, speaking of chase, here comes Chase. The greatest thing about Zaro being passive as he is, or even submissive, he will. There, there usually won't be a tiff with him because he won't fight back. It takes two to tango, so if you have two dogs that chase, good boy. Two dogs that are um, more active, more uh, dominant, that's when you get trouble. Zara backs down to Gigi, <laughs> which is what he does. Okay, G, let's go get you some more water. Want to see if you can get in the tub? G over. She just wants to be right there, doesn't she, Jeff? <laughs> you want some water, G? Okay, guess not. She just said, I'm fine, Dad. So we've almost got, as I was, I've been telling you, this is Chasing Princess, by the way. We've almost got the Wolf Den, which is going to be my studio, where we're going to do mega broadcast with different guests and really tell about everything going on without a lot of distractions. There's Chase getting into the groove here. Let me see if I can give you a view of this. Now that I know I have don't have audio there, I won't go. Here's Zara. Look, he's he's got the flag. And Chase will get him off the flag, which helps us out. Oh. I thought Gigi was going to go in the tub there. Yeah, so we're really moving slow today because the equipment has been not cooperating. Jack says, that's cool with me. Trying to give you a view of Jag laying down. Sometimes you got to yell a little bit at Zara to get off the flag. There we go. And Zara's engaged. Let's see if he goes around. Yep, he's going to run the course. He's going to run the gamut now. The princess is thinking about running it when it comes up this way. There he goes. There he goes. Now you got him kicking, Jimmy. I think so. Now, see, he could be faster than the flag. The flag can go about 30 miles per hour. He can actually outrun it when it goes around a corner. 
There he goes. Okay, there, you watch him, he's gonna catch it. He's gonna go past him, yep. Now he's shortcutting him a little bit because he knows the direction it's gonna go. That's why we'll change direction sometimes. And you might have seen me free ranging where I talk about shortcutting. Girl! Prince is just barking at it. <laughs> He's, I worked him pretty good at the big farm the other day. The, yeah, the big tire. Here he comes now. See how this area becomes the central? Because it's the hub, it's where it comes back. That's Princess barking at it. Now he got it. So, so, good boy. <laughs> so, see, see Chase dominating him, but it's okay. It's, it's help, gonna help me get him off the flag. <laughs> good boy. Is yeah, Princess is going at it. Let's get a close up of her. There she is. That is the pretty princess. Oh, actually, yeah, she's coming up. See if you can see the smile on her face, folks. Okay, now, oh, she decided to stop. She's gonna do a pit stop. <laughs> this does get them going. Emptying their body, which is a good thing. So I was getting into it now. <laughs> There's Princess, now she's back. Back to the hub. What's up, Chasey? Chase is checking out his little sister again. Okay, so Jim just switched it up on Zorro. He was coming towards the motor. And he pulled it back. Let's see if we get some close ups of Zorro. What's that? Yeah, he likes it though. Sorry folks, trying to give you the best view possible. We're still going at it.
That's good for us. And that was Princess getting in the tub. What's up? Jack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> brother and sister. Big brother, little sister. The other one up and running? Oh, cool, cool. So we do have two machines here, folks. Um, two electric power. There's a couple battery power. We actually called a battery on fire once as we worked the heck out of it. We had a charger hooked to it. The car batteries, again, these built machines were built for portability. Um, not, not the ones that I custom built, though, because we don't take them. They're not portable. They don't need to be. A little bee hanging around me. He's got it, Jim, I think. No. No, he doesn't. Chase wants him to. <laughs> <laughs> so please leave me comments questions whatever comes to your mind and i will check the feed in a little bit i'm gonna actually probably a good idea to check it now boy chase are still alive. Sorry folks, trying to get you caught up here. Oh, yeah. Hey Kathleen, how are you? Great to see you. Yeah, Princess is in there. Yes, it's pretty comical with these guys. <laughs> the, um, you know, we try to find activities. The biggest thing is that appeal to the dogs. And as you can see, Chase and Jag aren't really into this activity. But because Princess and Zara love it so much, we come and do it. And if you watched me earlier, I take them for some free-ranging runs that circle the farm fields here. Um, not near as big as the other farm areas and land areas we roam just enough to get them a half mile do it a couple times while we're here and they clock some mileage the dogs that aren't is into this so everybody gets some exercise and again the dogs that aren't into it chase they like chase and jag they choose to rest as you see jag over there he's always resting or to um harass each other and play there we go that's princess yelling at the flag let's see if zara's in on it Jim's going to play cat and mouse with him again. He's going to try to... Well, that's Princess running with him. There he goes. Oh, no. He stopped halfway. So Jim will bring it back. Your mileage check real quick. Yeah. Sorry, folks. Camera was a little off there. Just doing.
The Zara's got in three and a half miles. Princess has a much too. And that's pretty good for a day like today. We've been out here for about a, an hour, a little better. And Jag's got probably a little less than a half a mile. <laughs> A little more than half a mile. <laughs> oh, good boy. Lazar's going to cut across. He thinks he can cut off the flag. But Jim's smarter than that. Jim might let him catch it. I'll catch up there. Oh. He thought it was going the other way. And it was. Chase, Zora, Princess, Gigi, and Jags over sleeping. Look at that. Chase says, I want to dominate. <laughs> so we'll stay out here and keep, keep the dogs out there as much as they want. What's that? Surprise. Yeah. He got like four miles. He likes What's that? He likes riding downhill. <laughs> He's no dummy. <laughs> He's seen this mare go around before. Yep, let me get a hold of baby and we'll take care of you. Folks, I'm gonna let me see. I'm gonna take a ride. Um it's I can't keep you with me because we're not set up like that today. But J Jim will get you'll be with Jim, you're in good hands. He'll give you some views, and I'm sure Gigi will be crying because I'm leaving her. Uh I gotta leave my broadcast pad here. Come on, G. Come on. Hey, no. Come on, G. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on, G. Come on, let's go.
Yeah. Yeah, don't go too much further back there. You'll get. Some I won't. Right. I won't. Perfect, right there. Gee, oh no, oh no, gee. Come on, come on. Sorry about the turn around, but gee gets wrapped around my legs. Come on, gee. Come on, gee. Come on. Come on, <laughs> What are you doing? Come on, come on back through the fence, come on. Your daddy's coming, your daddy's coming. Your daddy's coming, yes. Come on, G, they'll be coming just a minute. Just a minute. They'll be coming, Gigi. They'll be coming and you'll be happy. You'll be happy. Here they come. Here they come, G. Here they come. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes, look. Here he comes. Here comes Chase. Here comes Chase. There he is. There he is. Look. 
Good chase. There's Daddy. Oh. What's our buddy? <laughs> Still going <laughs> I won't kill him. Here they come. 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 Hey, come on, Dad. Daddy! And Gigi having a fit. Gigi's having a fit. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. That has more energy than all of them. I see. I got girl. <laughs> I heard it go flat. Oh, the tire went flat? Yeah, totally flat. I heard it. Hang on, I'm going to grab my pad. He's saying, oh. hey, 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 hey. What'd she do? She, she got tangled up in her wire, her wire. <laughs> no, GG back. Good. Huh? No. What you shake it? Who wants to be with me? Oh my god. Help me do it, bud. She might like you better than Cindy. <laughs> I've been taking her everywhere, huh? <laughs> she likes that. She, she really loves to go with them dogs. Oh gosh, I would let her sometimes. Mm hmm. Okay. Gigi didn't care, did she? Gigi didn't care. No. Zara waiting for the flag. Uh -huh. See Zara. You ready? Yeah, man. Light her up. Uh -huh. We're back, folks. So, Zara's got close to five miles now. Uh, Princess is about two and a half. He usually doubles what she does. And Gigi's got about uh, three tenths of a mile. <laughs> so. Uh, sorry I couldn't take you with me on the ride. I don't have the camera set up like that today. But uh, I've been trying to include you all in everything I'm doing. So I hope you're able to enjoy it and maybe have some questions or comments for me that I can address and let you know how we do and whatever you may have to say. I look forward to it. See Chase and Jag over there. I can find them. <laughs> Just, uh... A little tough to see my viewfinder. Princess is chilling. She was rolling out there. I don't know if you got a chance to see us coming up the aisle way there. She was really rolling and I got a flat tire out of it. I'm the Z-Man. So that's 
sure we're at, folks. I'm gonna see if there's any more comments anyone may have. Gives me a chance. Gigi's chilled. Hey, uh, hey, Kathleen. I saw you asking if Gigi could go for a ride. It's too hard because I got to balance myself on that thing and um, the way we're set up, unfortunately. But in the future, we'll be training her to do it. Oh, we got a nice amount of comments here. Great. Hi, Cheryl. Great to see you. Yes. Thanks so much, everybody. Really appreciate all the kind words. Um, now, Cheryl, you should be able to hear. I'm hoping. Testing one, two. Let me see, actually. I'm hoping you can hear. The, uh... Hoping it's going. It's a new way of broadcasting. Trying out a bunch of different ways. And I think when I change cameras, it's hard to hear. Because the audio is not following it. But we'll fix that on the settings at some point. Modern technology, you gotta love it. So Chase is right here, folks. I'll give you a zoom in of Chase. He looks like a wolf, doesn't he? He's got real long legs. He's kind of lanky. And he lopes when he runs. And there's his partner in crime. That's the Jagster. And Jag is kind of the uh, chill one. Couch potato, if you will. Zorro. Call him the gentle giant. Superman. He amazes... Yeah, with all his uh, high activity level and just what he can do. And then, of course, you got the pretty princess. I'll give you a view there. So now you're watching Princess in the Tub. The uh, flag came off. Uh, we've been having some flag problems. And, Zorro, and Chase says, well, I'm going to dominate Zorro while the flag goes off. And you can see Gigi. She's just in chill mode. Princess is actually laying down in there. How cool is that? Well, she was starting to. And what happens is when they lay down, I think I've explained this before, it's kind of like swimming in the water. They cool their underside, which is where a dog's internal organs lie. Look, look, the flag's moving a little erratic, which makes it more exciting for the dogs. That's it. That's all I got it. So I says, okay, I chased it for now. So I'll give you live mileage readings, folks. And I might be able to actually show you the controller. I mean, had a tremendous amount of luck doing that in the past. Okay, so Princess, can you see that? Uh, still a little hard to see. I'll read it to you. 2.38 miles to be exact. And Zaro, 4.6 miles to be exact. I'm going to get in on the Jagster now. Oh, uh, his is wrong. One one mile. I think he's got a little more than that. Not much. And Chase is at 2.51 miles. Pretty interesting stuff. And this is just... It's a great way to know the activity level they're doing and how far we've gone for the day or whatever we're traveling. I'm going to try to give you a view of Princess getting in the tub.
So, and it's interesting too. You can tell a dog's mobility ailments, or hopefully no ailments, by the way they get up. So when they lay down, as they get older, it's harder for them to get up from laying down totally uh, on the ground, not just sitting. And especially as I was saying, when they have less movement in their joints, less mobility when they've been resting in one area for a while or sleeping, etc. So I like to have a little bit of a gauge for everybody and I use that for myself. They're playing a little cat and mouse with Zorro where we move the flag. <laughs> and the flag goes out there. And Zorro says, not in the mood to chase. Not, not too much chasing today. I mean, chase is taking a breather. Jag, he's in permanent chill mode. Breeze feels really nice. Got a breeze going on. Gigi's loving it. I'm loving it. Brady's loving it. Good thing it's uh, coming up on a spa day. I think next week, if you will, maybe the week after, because uh, starting to get the coats a little dirty. So the place we're at right now is about 45 minutes from my home, and it's nice because it gives the dogs time to cool down before we get home because as soon as they get home they want to eat and usually like a human you don't want to eat too close to exercise time or too close after exercise time with the dog it's especially important because they can bloat bloats when their stomach basically inverts turns upside down in their body and uh, can be fatal if not uh, treated by a veterinarian so never experienced it but I've uh, learned a lot about it and understand it don't truly know the exact cause. I don't think anybody does, but they know some of the um, pointers or some of the catalyst, which is taken into food, even water sometimes, with too much heavy breathing around exercise time. Also, it can be uh, hereditary. So, you need to keep that into consideration. And some dogs are more prone to it than others, as I was saying, hereditary. But the shape of their body can be a precursor, can let you know that they could be prone to it. The veterinarian can help you determine that. Um, additionally, if your dog is subject, does um, bloat, or has bloat in the past, you might want to ask your veterinarian. They can staple their stomachs. It sounds kind of evasive, but um, it can keep them from bloating. So that's a that's an option, a modern technology option, modern day science, if you will. So I think I've mentioned it, but this course is about three and a half, three acres, and usually most official lore courses. Zara's got the he's got the flag, and he's just going to have his way with it. So, and here comes Chase. Chase telling him, "Don't get that flag." <laughs> so he's going to dominate him a little bit. So I hope you're enjoying today's broadcast. Like I said, we're going to have a lot of exciting broadcasts come up. I've got the Wolf Driver, Wolf Den, or my Wolf Driver studio, if you will, going online as we speak you're probably if you're on youtube and you uh subscribe to my wolf driver channel or you go to the wolf driver channel we'll probably have it actually some sneak previews up and running tonight by the way it gives you a good time this is a good time to mention join my wolf driver unleashed group because jim's just trying to get zaro away from the flag so we can get it started he doesn't he tears it up again the flag's made of almost like a plasticky material it's real easy to break apart that way when the dogs bite it 
they don't uh, have a tug of war match with it and then possibly put themselves in a dangerous situation. So we, we, like I said, we have to think of everything when we do these activities. But if you join the Wolf Driver Unleashed group, I'll give you some behind the scenes views of what I do and how I do it. The Wolf Driver Studio is like nothing I've ever done before. It's actually got one of the 360 cameras in it, but a real high definition one. So on, in YouTube, right now on Facebook, they just came out with a higher definition you're going to be able to view it in. But um, I don't think we have access to that yet. So YouTube is the only way to see true 360 in 4k and what i mean by 360 is where you control the camera view you control how you want what you want to see whatever and we've made designed the studio with that in mind so there's something a point of interest to look at almost everywhere you look but in addition because it's bigger than the camera could actually get views of even though it's a very wide angle lens and you're viewing in 360 we have it on a trolley that rides the room, the length of the room, and actually looks like it does a flyover of a lot of the dog bikes and sleds that I've used in the past and sometimes still use, but a lot of what I pioneered. And when you take the 360 camera and you look above, you can see a lot of photos that are on the ceilings, believe it or not, of myself and the dogs and a lot of the ventures we've been on in the past. You, if you've been following me for a while, you'll probably recognize some of them. And We'll, um, there's a TV, big screen TV in there that I'm going to have videos playing and I'm going to describe a lot of the videos and what we were doing and give training pointers and so much more. So I look forward to you joining us there. And again, on the Wolf Driver Unleashed group, you'll get a behind the scenes view and we're going to have other dog trainers and special specialists, um, hopefully some veterinarians as guests. Uh, we're going to do his, uh, historian. I'm going to be broadcasting with a lot who's working with me on the presidential pet museum and he'll know about the history of a lot of the trails we run really historic. Um, the civil war has run through a lot of the areas as well as, um, railroads that are so pivotal and so much a part of American history. So um, he'll be able to answer questions and really tell some interesting stories. We're going to do some readings from there. We're going to have uh, some of our musicians that you see associated with Wolf Tunes, which is my music end of Wolf Driver, where I've written so many songs that either parodies, parody famous songs that you may be familiar with from Zeppelin to Fleetwood Mac to names you probably haven't heard of to actually original pieces that we've done and we've worked with a lot of wonderful musicians along the way some are local to the area so we're going to have them come in and do some of their um, covers of famous groups and maybe some wolf driver original hits and they'll be playing the wolf axe which is the wolf driver guitar that i designed so there's really a ton there i, I can't even begin to tell you and I think we're going to be the only one broadcasting this way. So we got three dogs down. <laughs> one dog still chasing. That's his email. <laughs> you got three dogs down, Jim. <laughs> See what you do to my dogs? You got four of them down. Yeah, four of them. She's down too, I know. So, and you know, this is what it's all about. You come out, the dogs want to chase, they chase. They want to play, they play. They want to jump in the water, they jump in the water. And they just want to chill, they chill. And if there's Zaro, they just want to chase all day. So, um, actually, he's a little calm for today. He's not clocking them out much like he usually does. Some of that's a tribute to the heat. Some of it's, uh, you know, he's getting older. And some of it's to our busy schedule as we clock a lot of mileage and we have over the years. So the studio, in the studio, I'm going to be able to tell you a lot more about this in a setting that's more conducive to me taking questions from you, fielding questions and comments, as well as when I have um, guests joining me, they'll be able to ask questions that I might not think of, of course, and we'll be able to ask them questions and comments and get their view on different aspects that they specialize in that's either dog-related or something to do with the uh, wolf driver routine or routines, I should say. So we're going to keep going. Um, the broadcast, it's possible it could fall off. Um, this is a new way of broadcasting, again.
I just wanted to give you that view of Zara jumping in. In case you hadn't seen it, it's cool. We got a camera set up over there and it switches views and it's really, really neat. But we're gonna keep going. The broadcast might, uh, one of these batteries, there's multiple cameras out here and different batteries going on and different ways we're getting this across the network. Something could uh, lose its charge even though we got backup chargers. So we're probably gonna sign off at some point in the near little bit. But it's a good time for you, again, to ask questions, comments, whatever. And I'll address it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to check the hotline now. <laughs> I'll check the page. Because when I'm holding the camera and doing everything I'm doing, it's, uh, I can't have direct access to it. When we're in the studio, it'll be up on a screen. I'll be able to tell instantly how Gigi sees people. And she's like, well, what's going on? Temperature's really nice now. Bunch of comments. Hey, thanks, Cheryl. Yes. Uh, little Gigi is content. Yes, yeah, she is. She is. Oh, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Thanks so much for telling me that. Yeah, when I switch cameras, you can't hear. That's what we figured out. And um, thanks for mentioning about the guitar. It is really awesome. And it's funny. I'm not a musician. I know I've mentioned this many times. If you follow me, you know that. But I've worked with so many wonderful musicians, and I've kind of gained a little bit of uh, knowledge in writing songs and I really like it because it helps me document everything we're doing and we've done so the music just brings everything to life and it makes it an entertaining way for others to learn about it so I hope to share that with you all in the Wolf Driver studio I was checking it all out oh it's all though And I know um, sometimes he'll look like he's actually got a little bit of blood on him. Sometimes they will bite their tongue. Dogs do that. Um, some dogs are more prone to it than not. Um, nothing dangerous. But just like to keep an eye on it, just because he gets real excited and tongue's hanging. And his paws are banging. Okay, cool. We can breathe. So both machines are down. The pretty princess here. Chase is getting a little energy. He's rolling around. Zara's just going to wait by the flag. And Chase is coming over. As soon as it stops, Chase wants to come over and uh, say, hey, I'm the boss. And I know Cheryl, if you're still on, you've uh, been with me plenty of times when Chase bites on his harness. He's like, got to be occupied all the time. That's just the name of this game. All dogs, um, all of us that have dogs know they get their own personality traits. And some are a little quirky, if you will, but that's what makes them so much fun. And uh, Chase and Zaro and Princess, Jag and Gigi, they've all got theirs. And all my dogs in the past have had theirs. Yeah, I've had Huskies in the past. I've mentioned it. You can see it online. But I used to have um, my first Husky was named Zar, C-Z-A-R. And that's who Zaro is named after. Zaro is the A R R O. I spell it. But... Um, Zar was a very dominant husky, and he was my only husky for probably about a year. So he um, learned to like being alone and felt that, like his name, he was king. So when I introduced another husky to the household, it was very challenging, but very rewarding, too, to get him a partner. And Zar was the first one to help me pioneering what pioneer what I call wolf driving or fur wheeling where the dogs actually uh, get on the dog cart and mush and actually I was really mushing with Zar um, when, when I got originally started off on a bike with him because I didn't know anything about real mushing and then I'm going to go up here and have a seat and then the bike proved to be so successful I got him a partner another family member we got another husky named Hudson and with the bike with Hudson, it was cool. I could do two dogs on the bike, and they were loving life. I was loving life. We were loving life. I'm going to have a seat here, folks. So if the camera goes a little haywire. Oh, sorry, buddy. You'll understand. And that's where I said I had to get something a little more 
Hey, Jag. Hi, good boy. Had to get something that was a little more challenging for him, and I got into the Seiko cart, which is a dog cart. They use it to train lead sled dogs, and I actually got one. Jag. Sorry, folks. It's getting a little... Wish I could set this up. Actually, I can set this up. I'm gonna stay. Stay. Good boy. I don't know how this is gonna look, but I'm gonna try. Actually, I can tell how it's gonna look. Okay, Zara. Plots. Good boy. Plots. Plots. Good boy. <laughs> He's got like a million gallons of drool coming out of him. I'm gonna see if I can move. The, um, I'll move back a little bit. Uh, TG. <laughs> I'm gonna get this position that you can see me, hopefully. Uh, a little closer. And I'm going to try to get the gang in here, too. So that would mean I would lower the camera right to about there. Cool. Excellent. So I'm going to bring all the dogs over here, folks. We're going to have a little party, a little conference with you. Come on, guys. Plots. That, I believe, is Princess. Hi, Zara. Zaro, I was talking, sorry. Can you hear me? Sorry, it might be a little low, I forgot. That's the microphone. Hi, Chase. So, I was telling about my other dogs, and I got all these other dogs around me. Hi, good girl. She doesn't want to laugh at me either. Plots? Sorry. Princess Plots, Jag, Chase Plots, come on good boy, Plots, Plots, good boy, Plots, so I'll push on him a little bit to get on the Plots right where I want him, good boy, Chase, Princess Plots, she's a little more apprehensive about Plotsing, Princess is, because of her age, and it's a little harder for her to do it, to get up from it, but since we're going to be here a little while, it's okay if she wants to, Jag, Good boy. Here. Jack. Plots. Jack, plots. Hey, Jim. Can you put the camera on me? I'm sorry, bud. Oh, sure. Sorry, plots. Sorry. Plots, good boy. He thinks Jim's going to run the machine when he hears him. Sir, sir. Good boy. All, the children there together. all of them. I never seen Zoro get tired of <laughs> He's getting it. If you could pick the camera up, buddy, hit that auto power off. Mm -hmm. Just aim it at me and move back a little bit so you can get us all in the picture. Cool. Uh, yep. You can tilt it down maybe. Or... Yeah, there you go. So, Plots, so. Princess. <laughs> okay, now they want to get away. Jack, Plots. We got everybody for Princess. She's over there. Want to get up? She's the most active today, and Zara's most tired. Well, I don't know about the most. But... Okay, nobody seems like they want to lay too long. <laughs> Happy in that shade. Yeah. Got crowded for Princess. What's that? Got crowded for Princess. Yeah, it, got cr it did. Mm -hmm. Okay, Zara. I'm getting wet. See Lulu, Lulu appeared. <laughs> she came out from nowhere, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Jack, Jack. 
Oh, my handle. I like the handle. You like the handle so nice, don't mm -hmm. it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can go, You want to run a little more? If we can. Whoopsie. I don't know how many buddies are running, but... <laughs> up here now like Chrissy. I know. <laughs> he learned from her, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, let's see if he wants to run anymore. She's happy. She's just trolling around the course. So, sorry folks, I was trying to get you better, some better views of how we chill, but... What's that? I know, it's all the hair. We're just learning this camera setup, so I apologize if we were a little, uh, if the camera was a little zoomed in too much. So Jim's going to run, I'm going to give you a view from back here now. And you can see Princess is just sniffing around the course. Chase sniffing, Zara looking for the flag, and Jag looking for a place to lay down. Cool interaction there. I don't know if you call it that, but what was happening is Chase just, I call it, he yielded to Princess. She was coming over, and if he stood his ground, she probably would have pushed because, again, she's got that alpha mentality and doesn't realize that she's not everything she used to be, and she wants to rule the roost soon, so she would have just pushed Chase out of the way, and that can create a struggle between the two or a tiff but because chase just moved away because he knows better he just let her have let her have the where she ever she wanted and that's the way we teach them to avoid them from getting into fights now it wouldn't be a dog fight like a terrible thing but they can draw blood with each other and they can make what they can hurt each other so we want to be careful about that Huskies, again, one of the closest breeds to the wolf. Come on, Chase. Good boy. No, no. Chase. Chase. Good boy. He was just too, too up close and personal. He's not going to hurt Gigi, but she doesn't need him gawking over her every second of every day. Now Chase just laid down. That's good. And Princess is coming over to see what was going on because I was talking in a higher tone, and a, uh, my tone of voice with Chase was authoritative. And Princess hears that and thinks something's wrong and she wants to make sure everything's okay because she has that motherly alpha personality in her. She has had puppies. Before I got her, she um, had a couple of litters. So, in fact, uh, um, she, that's, it was a family that had her and they bred her. And I think what they had told me was she got bred a little too much. Um, they didn't mean to breed her that much, but um, she was around the males, and that's what happens. So when I got her, she was about four years old. She's about 13 and a half now. One of my stipulations was she needed to be fixed because I didn't want her to breed anymore, and um, I don't breed dogs and didn't want the competitiveness that goes on with that and the... Um, different behaviors that are associated with but usually a female that's had puppies before learns to be very protective and even more dominant because she has there goes Zaro you see that because she's learned she needs to protect her it's instinctual she needs to protect her uh, young <laughs> he got him so that's why um, it's my understanding they'll do that with some police dogs. They'll, they'll make sure that they've had a litter or so for the females, I believe, before they fix them to keep that or to make sure they have that edge on them. Pretty interesting stuff. That's all I was going in. I could change this so you can get a view of it. And that's Princess you're looking at there.
tags back in his area. Oh, Gigi, she's jumping up on me. So we've been having a long broadcast. This, everything's held out really well. I'm real glad you can be a part of this. Sorry the cameras are a little wonky. Not as smooth as I'd like them to be, but I'll learn to work them better so you can enjoy more of our outings. And on this side of the course, it's shady. So I'm standing over here and letting the dogs know, hey, there's shade over here. Jag already knows it, but <laughs> comes Zara flying. Sorry, camera couldn't keep up with them. And you are live, folks, unless you're watching the rebroadcast. I'll give you a mileage reading shortly. And Princess is coming over to see what's going on. If you want right here, and Zaro is getting ready to chase, it looks like. We are. Chase is at about three miles. Zara's almost at six, folks. Okay, both machines. And Princess is almost at three herself. Here comes Chase to. Now, when Zara's had enough of that, he will let him know. But until then, they'll be playing around with each other. <laughs> And uh, Jag will get in on that too sometimes. Both machines, Jim? Down. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to check the feed. And that's why I said, please, by all means, comment, leave questions, whatever the case may be. Just drop by to say, hey, and I'll give you a shout out because I've been checking the feed. I don't see it on the actual broadcast camera. Hey, okay. So let's see. We've got... Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mimi. I appreciate that. Oh, and you can hear me great. Thank you so much. What, well, um, Cheryl? It says auto power off because it's operator error. It shouldn't say function photo zoom. That's the camera I'm using, and I just haven't played with enough to get rid of that. Um, Mimi said she had an Alaska Malamute Timberwolf mix. Wow, that was police trained. That's really cool, Mimi. The um, I don't know if you know my my original. I've been professionally trained to train dogs, and my master trainer was a police dog trainer, and he did Schutzen, which most police forces, militaries, uh, protection agencies use to train their dogs. And Schutzen is a German art, and that comes fully equipped with all the words. Like, for instance, we say plots when we want our dogs to lay down, which means down, and a real plots position. You might see me say it to my dogs. Jag's in a real plots position where their stomach is actually touching the ground the whole way. It's not where they're rolled on their side. It's their underbelly. And the reason being because it takes them longest to get up from a position like that. So you, if you were doing work with a dog, protection work, and you were in a situation, a confrontation, where you need your dog to plots. You needed him to lay down. He needs to be able to do it on command and stay there until you release him. By plotting, if for some reason something would happen that you wouldn't be familiar with um, or you wouldn't expect, the dog should always remain plots. But if he would go to or she would go to get up, it takes them the most amount of time. Now we're talking hundreds of thousands of, th hundreds of, thousands of seconds less more, I mean, um, more time to get up, which gives you more time to react to put them back in that position or, or address what's going on. So sitting is not always the best way to do it. Um, it's better to plot a dog, but that's just one of the commands. Additionally, by them knowing the different German commands, uh, someone here in the United States who's not familiar with German, which most people aren't unless you're German or you know that language, you would be able to give them a command and chances are the potential bad guy that you're com 
you're confronting won't know how to talk to your dog. Mr. Wolf, hey, Bill. how are you? Right. I'm going to change cameras. I have to talk to the gentleman here. Back to doing this because I want to broadcast. Good, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Great to see you, right, and see you. we'll take care of you before. No before problem. I... Thank you so much. I'll see you in uh, November. November. <laughs> I like to hear about your adventures too. <laughs> I'll, 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 yeah, if I have an email, I'll send you. I'll post you a couple things. Please do. Thank you so much. Which <laughs> want me to send you some pictures of the floor? The oh yeah, yeah. The in the bathroom and the floors in the place. He said. I said, he is fantastic, and the crew he had to install it was superb. That's great. Those That's guys great. could not have been nicer and more polite and speedy. I That's mean, great. It was wonderful to watch him work. That's great. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the business, too. Thank you. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. It's the least I could do. <laughs> you did, you did <laughs> Thank you so much. Great to see you. All right. You too, buddy. Thank you. Sorry about that, folks. I'm back with you. And uh, sorry, I had to drop the camera off. The gentleman who owns the property was here and uh, got to fraternize with the people. So uh, he, coincidentally, his name is Mr. Wolf. How, how cool is that? So you're back live with the Wolf Driver, okay? We've got the pretty princess right here. We've got the Jagster right over chilling in his normal chill mode. We've got the Gigi Meister with us. And we've got... Ch Chase, Landau, and the Z-Man, Zaro. Mileages are ranging today anywhere from 5 miles to 
Jag. He won't. He's not bringing the bread home today. He's uh, got probably a mile in. If you were with me earlier, you saw me rounding the area. There's a course here I run about five eighths of a mile. Uh, around the cornfields and soybean fields. We're in Maryland, in case you're just tuning in. And please, by all means, uh, all my friends out there, join the Wolf Driver Unleashed group because you'll be getting plenty of action of what I do, uh, direct access to everything we do and to me. And uh, we're starting a new studio I'm calling the Wolf Den, Wolf's Den, and that's the Wolf Driver Studio, which will be on the big Wolf Driver page as well, but also on a lot of other, um, a lot of, cool stuff will be happening that I'll be doing strictly for the Wolf Driver Unleashed group. So please be sure to join us there. Um, everything's great. Got a new camera set up going on today I talked about. And I was just talking to Mimi uh, before I was talking to Mr. Wolf here about Schutzen training, which is police dog training, which they use uh, for police dogs. And she was saying how she had a timber wolf, and I think she had done some protection work with that uh, hybrid, I think she was saying. Um, but uh, I'll look back at the feed, Mimi. And if you have more, please, I love talking and hearing everybody's input and coming right back at you. So we're taking a breather. The machines do overheat occasionally, even though these machines were custom built for me. And my guys did it with huskies in mind because, again, this equipment that's made for this sport called lure coursing traditionally is... Um, not as heavy duty and not made for endurance like we do with huskies like run it's made for sight hounds or other breeds that just most breeds don't have of a there's stronger breeds out there there's faster breeds out there and there's more athletic breeds out there but the husky just has so much endurance and that's what enables them to actually go um 50 to 100 miles a day they could actually, if they were conditioned properly, they're built for that kind of traveling. And they're built for sleds. So I don't know if you know the original story of uh, Balto, the, the sled dog, and um, how he got the he got the serum to Nome. Uh, they had to go to some remote areas. The only way to get there was because of the harsh, brutal winters in Alaska was through um, my sled dog, my sled dog team. So he led the team. He and his partner, I can't recall his partner's name if you're out there. Gosh, there's a um, statue of Balto in Central Park. Tells all about his venture. And uh, those dogs were bred for that. They're bred for pulling and heavy-duty activities. So, you see, Princess has a lot of nervous energy. She's had it her whole life, and it's really wonderful because it keeps her mobile. So, we call her a cat on a hot tin roof because she's always moving and that's what keeps her mobility going, even at her age of 13. When we travel in a car, I know Cheryl, if you're out there listening, Cheryl's heard me many times when we're traveling in our, in our truck, even in this little van, she's uh, pacing back and forth in the van, she can't pace, so she just does circles in her seat. That's what she does. And I've talked many times, I haven't done it, I should put a pedometer on her and see the mileage she accrues when we take our long trips, uh, three to six hour drives, because I'm sure that could be measured in miles with an S. When we run, when we're attached to the dogs, here it comes, this is a cool view. Okay, so they're going the other way. There's Zorro. We put a new birdie on, a new flag, we call it a birdie sometimes. And it's gonna be real visible when it comes around here. We don't have many chasers today. They're not chasing as much as they normally do. Let's see if we can get it going. Here comes Zorro. Here comes the flag. <laughs> they love when it comes up there. 
So you can see from this view, you'll be able to see GM, and that's Mr. Wolf, the gentleman who owns the property. Here comes Zorro. You can really feel a temperature drop, which is really nice. Zorro looks like he's prancing, doesn't he? Down there, like a, he needs to be on a runway, like a runway model. Here comes the flag, folks. Let's see if I can get you a close up of the flag. There it comes. And there goes Princess. And we, Jim brought the flag back down to here so you could get another view. And so Zara would have to chase it this way. Princess zoomed up on that flag. Did you hear her bark at it? <laughs> How cool was that? Just the whole fact that she's out here at her age just really puts a smile on my face that she can participate in these activities and do all this stuff. And she's getting some loving right now from Mr. Wolf. Ha ha ha, look at that. Look at that. That is the pretty princess. Everybody's a dog lover. I guess with a last name like Wolf, you have to be, huh? Here comes Zorro. See, and this is so cool. Everybody's doing their own thing. Okay. So the machine's down again. Here comes Chase and Princess. And here's the Z-Man. And Chase is gonna Chase is gonna dominate him. Chase! You're on live video feed, dude. Can't be doing that stuff. <laughs> Princess is just like, boys will be boys. So Zorro, hey, this is a good time for me to give you a close-up of the flag. And as I'm walking towards an object that can be, that the dogs could try to claim as theirs, I have to keep that in mind, especially if I was with unfamiliar dogs, because they might want to show me that that's their toy, and they might become aggressive towards each other. There's the flag. And you can see the red thing on the end is the rubber piece. Did you see that little canine behavior there, that little uh, from Chase's like told Gigi, hey, get away from that. And he was good. He didn't growl or anything, but he's letting her know that he he's the boss because she's small. Now, he might not do that if Princess was walking over there. So they all have their own, um, uh, their, their hierarchy and how they, their place in the wolf pack. And that's what enables them to live in the wild. For, whoa, Zorro! He just ripped it right off. <laughs> That's what enables them to live in the wild. And I'm just watching Chase. See, see how Chase backed off when Princess went there? Princess? Now, see, she's feeling a little cocky because Chase just totally moved out of her way. And because he did that, she thinks that, oh, he's he's yielding to me. He's I'm going to push him around even more. <laughs> Sometimes niceness is weakness with dogs. So got to be alert as the dog trainer. And if you have a pack of dogs yourself or a multi-dog household, you got to be alert for the different behaviors they exhibit and what it really means. And I've become so accustomed to it, this breed just wears it right on their fur, just right on their chest, what they're doing. So Chase is going to lay next to it. And he's not really claiming it, but he's letting everyone know, yeah, I'm next to it, and see if anybody's going to challenge him. No, it wouldn't be an aggressive posture because he's laying down but in I can tell his posture there but that's what he's saying hey I want to play and if you guys want to play come and get the flag Here's Princess. so we're having a lot of mechanical difficulties today just because of the wetness in the ground I'm looking at a feather now it's a wet feather god bless you pretty princess she's sneezing and, but we take this time to just, you know, we are in summer to run softly and to give the dogs the time they need. And this kind of becomes chill mode. And Gigi sees something. She thinks, okay, I'm going to take a breather, folks. I'm going to lay down myself. 
Everybody's laying him. Hi, pretty princess. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Oops. <laughs> Gigi's trying to see what's going on here, too. Hi, good girl. So princess is going to lay right next to me. Now, Chase is seeing what's going on because I'm the pack daddy. And he wants to know, well, what's his princess getting access to me that he doesn't have and what's going on? Hi, good girl. How cute is that? She says, it's mine. So if you have any comments, folks, please, by all means, I can check the feed now. So I'm sitting down, in case you didn't, in case I didn't tell you. I'm going to also give you a model's reading in a sec. GG, what's going on? What's going on, my best girl? The Alaska Malamute, I'm looking back at your words, me, me, if you're watching still, that um, it, Timberwolf, what, that was police train, yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure you know a lot about Schutzen. So if you're just joining us, folks, I'm the Wolf Driver. You're watching us live, if you're watching this broadcast live, of my dogs, which I call the Wolf Pack, out on the Amazing Chase Course, which is something we call lore coursing. That's uh, how the sport's referred to by, uh, I believe, the AKC and a lot of dog professionals, dog-related uh, groups. And it's designed for sight hounds. Look at Zorro. Look at Gigi looking. What's he doing? So, so, so. Trying to get him off the flag. Cause we're... Try it now, or is it off? Yeah, it's off. Yep. So, Zorro, just by that little bit of pulling, took it off the pulley there, folks. I'm going to try to find the pulley for you. It's the string is off that pulley, and that makes it not ride as easily. So we have to restring it, and because I'm filming, Jim's going to do it. And <laughs> Jim's my assistant today, co-pilot, if you will, like I like to say. Yeah, he's got it off, Jim. Oh, he loved it. I'm going to give you a mile treating, folks. Chase is over three miles. Jake's mileage, mileless. <laughs> Chase and Princess are the same amount of miles. And let's see if we can get Zorro. Oh, look at him dominating him. Chase, I told you you're on live TV, buddy. And Zorro's over six miles. He's got six miles. I think I do, too. <laughs> Hey, you're not getting paid extra for that. <laughs> Don't even try it, buddy. <laughs> so we're just milling around now, waiting for Jim to reload the flag, and then we'll get the game started again. So this is just another activity you can do with your dogs. Um, it's a little extensive to do, to go and set up your own course, I understand. But from what I've been reading, there are places that are designing courses for people to come. Zorro! 
come and bring. He was he was trying to take it right off again. Oh, yeah, he will. That are um, you can go there and for I think a nominal fee like ten bucks you can run your dogs a couple of times around them. Their uh, lower course, you can do some lower coursing is what it's called. I call it the amazing chase because it's truly amazing how the huskies can do this and not tire. Okay, yep, I will. The huskies can run and not tire. And the way at least Zorro and Princess, especially during the colder months. Zorro! I'm just trying to get him not to rip it. During the colder months, like I said, Zorro was clocked uh, 15 miles or so and Princess 10 miles. Just chasing this. So it looks like they're just going round, round and round in circles, which pretty much they are. And in between there, I take them on breaks and free range them. Zorro! Zorro! Good boy. <laughs> Chase dominating them. And I let Chase do that. That's uh, just the dominance thing. It doesn't, it can in some situations, not with these dogs, but in some other dogs, it could cause an aggressive behavior if the dog didn't like it. Um, and then recognize it as a form of play. Yes, it is dominance, but it's play as well. Um, then I would eliminate that behavior. I wouldn't let them do it to them. Here they go. We got it. He got it. So. So Chase is trying to. Tell Zaro, I'm gonna jump on you, and he's not gonna do nothing. The princess is just happy laying down here with me, and I'm happy laying down here with her. Princess saw Chase mark that area, and that's how dominant she is. She's got to mark it too. Here comes Zaro. Do you see the way the flag rides up the string like that? Princess. It does that because the dogs used to chase it into that hut to where the motor is, and that used to become tangled some. So, we designed it this way and it's worked well for years. And here comes the flag. And here comes Princess. She's chasing it now. Love to see her clock bottle. She had a nice good rest. And here comes Chase. He's, he wants to get in on this little uh, party they got going on, the three of them. Chase! Good boy. Now, I told him not to um, take that dominant posture with Zorro, just while Princess was there, because she might try to stop it, too. <laughs> and uh, it's because I mentioned this just a little while ago. She's dominant, and she feels like it's her wolf pack. She's raised these guys since puppy. She's not the mama to them, but she's the uh, closest thing. Here she comes. Hi, good girl. Hi, good girl. And of course, whenever you're doing Praise, praise, praise. And folks, I'm just going to wipe the lens off here for one sec. Excuse me. I believe it was getting a little uh, dry there. A little um, slobber, if you will. Gigi, look at her dancing away. That's Chase, he just dropped right there. Hi, good girl. That is Princess you're looking at. She's got, um, she gets her face a little dirty and she's got some tear staining. As Huskies, I've noticed the lighter colored ones like her, she's all white. 
the tear staining, of course, is going to show more, and it's more prevalent. Um, watery eyes with in the lighter color eyes that I've noticed because I've had dark eyes on huskies as Chase. I had, had one before him, Hudson. And uh, the dark eyes seem to not be as sensitive and maybe to allergies, whatever makes them tear up. And so Princess, cool behavior there. Princess, Gigi's kissing me now. She's just coming up to my face. And Princess there and she yielded to Gigi because when dogs get that close to each other, that's often looked at as being intimidating towards each other or a threat or a challenge. So they usually won't look each other in the eye for any period of time and additionally um, won't get that close to each other unless they have that relationship. But if someone's dominant like Princess is, she'll still yield to uh, another dog that has position above her or has the position next to me which is above her because I'm the alpha so explaining that hierarchy again I hope uh, that makes sense the way I'm explaining it but it's the most So that's pretty much the show today, folks. I'm going to do some more stuff. If we get something exciting going on, I'll uh, light it back up. But for now, I hope you enjoyed it. You can go back and see a lot of stuff we did and I talked about. Oh, Gigi got a little scared there. Machine started going. Once again, I am the Wolf Driver, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. If you haven't already, please join the Wolf Driver Unleashed group. We've got some really cool stuff that's going to be coming on board online. Really